ASU GSV's Ed Innovation Summit. I'm Dr. Rod Berger with the Corps of Education and American Ed TV, standing next to a fellow Nashvilleian, uh, Richard Patton, the chairman of Youth Science and the CIO and the CEO of Courage Capital Management. Richard, how are you doing? Doing very well, thank you. Well, I know we were talking off air about the real objective that we're talking about, and, and I know a little bit, obviously, about Youth Science. We've chatted in the past. So get everybody caught up to speed about Youth Science, what it is, and really what brought you to even take this on. Youth Science is about helping people exploit their full continuum of ability and exploiting it potentially or particularly in academics and career. It's really important to understand that academic ability is only a small portion of the full continuum of a person's ability. And so if a person is not a superstar in school, that doesn't mean that that person can't be a superstar in the real world. And so we help people by helping them understand everything they have to apply to their life's endeavors. And when we help them understand that, and then we help them understand where in the world of careers they can be most successful, we then help them make lots of really important decisions in between those two points. So where should you train to go to an eventual career? What eventual career makes best sense for you? You know, 80% of the population under the age of 30 is still walking around wondering what they should do with their lives. A goodly number of them have been to college. It's really important that people go to college or begin their post-secondary education or training with the end in mind, with an objective. And that's what we try to help people do, is understand where you're going to fit best, where success will come to you most easily, and do it in a very rigorous and scientific method that will give you the confidence to follow our suggestions. So now, that sounds very simple now, right, yes. in, in its finished product. What was it like to attack that? I mean, I can't even imagine the complexity in building that into, I'll say, algorithm, and I don't even know if that's that, really that, the right. That is, that is it. You're right. So we all have a combination of something called aptitudes. And aptitudes are our DNA for potential success in the world of work. Just as people have certain athletic abilities that incline them to be either a basketball player or a swimmer or a football player. Those are more easily discovered than our aptitudes for work unless our academic aptitudes happen to line up with a particular type of work. And so first we had to go and figure out how to take aptitude tests or assessments and bring them into an online setting where they became more approachable to the, com to the common person. Aptitude assessments have been given in a clinical environment for a long, long time. What they haven't done, however, is make the transition from understanding one's aptitudes and to mapping them to careers and academic environments where that person's unique combination of aptitudes are most successful. Richard, are you a friend or a foe of higher ed? I would imagine that this is almost like deconstructing for them how they would approach educating these students that then would hopefully land the positions that they are matched with. Yeah, I think the genie's already out of the bottle and we've seen that, that, that things are already rolling in the direction of education becoming more and more inclined to cater to the individual student and understanding how that student learns, what that student's core makeup is, and helping that student take it as far as he or she possibly can. And that's in stark juxtaposition to the way post-secondary education has been served up for the past 400 years. It has been a one-size-fits-all situation where you take the student to the information, and have that student consume that information in a particular format, and then expect a certain set of results. We know that everyone learns a little bit differently. As a matter of fact, lots of people learn very differently. And we also know that people have abilities that span well beyond the academic aptitudes. And so what we're trying to do is work in conjunction with the more forward-thinking academics and the more forward-thinking post-secondary environments to really help people get what they want, which is if you, 
we, we surveyed over 2,000 households in the United States when we started this. And what we found when we asked parents why they, what they wanted for their young people when, they're, when, they're, when their child graduated from college or was 22 or 23 years old, we got a remarkable answer. Almost 95% of the respondents said, we just want them to be happy. And then we peeled the onion back a little bit and what we found was what parents and actually the young people really want is that they want to be independent, contented adults. That means that they're able to provide for themselves and that in the component of contentment is really, really important. They want to do something that they enjoy and where they will find a sense of meaning and accomplishment. Okay. And, and more often than not, college does not lead you to that direction. You don't discover that in college. You're busy trying to do what college is all about. And so what we're here to help people do is figure out what, what that goal should be and then the pieces in between that goal that will help them get there. Which college to choose? So what course? You're talking to take. a lot about disrupting these traditional foundations in education to some degree. So let's talk about something we, you're never supposed to talk about, but being in the South, right? Let's talk about politics, not religion, but what is the political landscape conducive to you, science? Well, and this is, this is, I think what's really, really interesting about what's happening universally in education, and I'm going to call it human development, because what we're really trying to do is optimize each person that, for whom we work, or with whom we work. And as post-secondary education becomes more and more expensive, and as more and more of the economic burden falls on the shoulders of the consumer, then consumerism and consumer choice emerges as an alternative to a very expensive environment. And so what you're seeing across the post-secondary landscape now is that some, some institutions are taking a different tack. They're not trying to raise price. They are really beginning to focus on how they can help each student achieve the most. We are here to augment that. We are here to, as, as a catalyst or as a step, as an initial stepping stone to you, the consumer of education, to you, the person who is going to ultimately be in a career, to help you understand where you will go and where you will be the most successful. And when you have that information, you can be a very, very intelligent user of this very broad education and post-secondary uh, training environment that we have in the United States. Richard, how can we plug you and, and use science into everything from teacher preparation to elementary schools, high schools? Because I would think that if I'm an educator, I'm a, I'm an, as a parent even, if I think about my son taking the assessment, going through the, the Latitude uh, product, I would hope that his experiences in education with his teachers would reflect this, this approach in connecting education and a career where you're content and you're happy. That's your, that's your objective for your child. Do we, see, yes, absolutely. Do we see that where they will be able to take these experiences and the results and the data and say, you know what, this might inform how we approach our curriculum and our delivery of it? Yes, I think, I think it really does. I think it, but it most importantly, it informs the consumer of those services. So you as a father would have your son, daughter, use our service, and our service will then tell your son or daughter, hey, here's your unique combination of strengths, and here are the places that it, they will play the best. Okay, you, you, you know, we've all heard these things, you know, figure out your strengths and then play to them. Don't play to your weaknesses, because that's somebody else's strengths, and you're gonna be frustrated your entire life. Everyone has a unique combination of strengths, and there is a place that everyone can deploy them. And so, importantly, our service is most applicable to people who are 16 years old and older. Okay? And that has to do with the, form, the foundational elements of your aptitudes. They become fully formed at around the age of 16. And interestingly, they don't change. So your aptitudes today are the same as they were when they were 16. They're going to be the same. Now that's so depressing, Richard. No, no. <laughs> but your aptitudes, it's like your DNA doesn't change. 
So that, that shouldn't depress you. Now, you, you've, you've come a long way with that original DNA. Okay? You can go a long way with your combination of aptitudes. Your aptitudes in, give you an idea of where you can obtain skills and knowledge and abilities. Okay? They, they are your platform from which you start. Okay? What you do with them is really important. Let's close with this. I would be curious to know, have you taken your own battery of assessments? Yes. And what would it, because now I'm thinking to myself, what would it be like to take and go through the latitude process and to see if it matches up with really sort of the path that I've taken or that anybody in this room, uh, the paths that they've, ta they've taken? I would say the 80-20 rule always works. Okay. Okay, and if, if, you, uh, if you have been successful, and, and success is a pretty broad, it's a pregnant word. You know, to me, success is not necessarily a financial benchmark. Success is, I wake up in the morning and I'm very excited about what I'm going to do that entire day. And that gonna, that's gonna happen again next month and the month thereafter. That is a tremendous metric of success. I know a lot of people who are extraordinarily financially successful, but they're miserable. So they're not successful in my opinion. Absolutely, and there are a lot of happy people here in this room for sure that have, I would imagine be on that 80% uh, with all the, the, obviously people who are very uh, well accomplished here at the Innovation Summit, which is exciting now to talk to those folks. Uh, what's next for you, Science? Well, we're, like, like all emerging companies, you know, we are trying to find that correct combination of price, distribution, and, uh, and message so that we can broaden our audience. The more people we serve, the better off we're going to be and the better off, I think, the country's going to be. Well, it'll be fun to catch up with you over time. And, and maybe, you know, obviously we're live, we live in Nashville so we can chat and, and really find out how you science is doing with Latitude because I think it is fascinating and it connects an area that we need so desperately when it comes to our education and the careers that these young people want to have so desperately, you know, and really but with purpose behind it. That's exactly right. Yeah. If, you, if you begin with an end in mind, if you begin with a goal, if you begin with a purpose, and you know that that purpose is valid, if you know that it, it, it's right, then your probability of, achie of, uh, of uh, achieving your objective goes up dramatically. And, and this is in a, it, you know, this in a world where 50% of graduates from college are unemployed. It's the average time to graduate from college now is six years. People are going to college to, quote, figure out what they want to do. We would really like to encourage people to understand that they can know what they want to do before they go to college. And they'll, they'll, they'll use that whole system much better if they know that. Well, continued success. It's been great to have Thank Richard Patton, the chairman of Youth Science. Uh, I'm Dr. Rod Berger with the Corps of Education and American Ed TV because education matters.